Now let's see the protracted active phase. This is also called the prolonged active phase. So let's, re uh, let's review, we have four stages of labor. So we have stage one of labor, which has an active, a latent phase and an active phase. We have the <coughs> stage two of labor, which is the delivery of the baby. And we have stage three, which is the expulsion of the placenta. And stage four, which is truly not a stage, but is a one or two hour um, period of time in which we need to closely monitor to the mother. So stage one of labor has a latent and active phase. The latent phase starts from zero to six centimeters of dilation of the cervix. Um, the duration of this is um, 20 in multiparous woman or 14 in multiparous woman. And um, here we also have phasement of the, of the cervix. Then the active phase starts from 6 cm dilation of the cervix and ends with 10 cm dilation of the cervix. Here the velocity or the rate at which we are continuing having cervical dilation is 1, um, 0 0.7 or 1 cm and dilation per hour if this is a nulliparous woman, 1 or 1.2 <clears throat> and 1 to 1.5 centimeters dilation per hour if this is a multiparous multiparous so this is the rate at which we should be having dilation or continuing dilation of the cervix. So um, prolonged or protracted active phase is, is prolonged so we will still we will still be having um, dilation so still having um, some cervical dilation but to a lesser rate than normal than normal so it means that the dilation we're having is going to be less than um, 0 0.7 or less than 1.2 centimeters per hour of dilation if this is an oliparous woman or less than 1.5 centimeter per hour dilation if this is a multiparous woman if we graph this um, we have here is the y-axis which is dilation of the cervix and here is the x-axis which is the duration or time so we have a, a normal graph which is the sank curve it should be something like this so we are having um, dilation of the cervix from 0 to 6 cm, this is the latent phase and then here we start having the active phase which is we have dilation of the cervix, we are continuing having dilation of the cervix but to a higher rate. If we have <coughs> prolonged or protracted active phase, this is active phase, so latent phase has been already um, normal, so latent phase is the same. Then we arrive to six centimeters of dilation. Then now the active phase starts, but we have a prolonged or protracted phase. So this is. So we still are having an, a faster rate of cervical dilation, um, compared to the latent phase. Just that this is um, slower than normal. So this is how it would look. 
Here, the, the rate, remember that the rate is the slope of the curve. So here, the slope of the curve, this slope, the slope of this black normal curve, if this really perfect woman should be 1.2 centimeters, so from here to here, from here to here, this should be like 1.2 centimeters in one hour. So let's say here to here, this is an hour. So this dilation occurs, um, let's say, more than 1.2 centimeters in an hour. This is normal in a really porous woman. Or if this would be, um, if this is a much porous woman, so from here to here should be 1.5 centimeters in a lapse of one hour. And this is normal in a much porous woman. But if but if we are having prolonged or protracted active phase, so the rate from here to here, the yeah, from here to here, we still have a dilation. So from here to here, we have a dilation, but it's less than normal. So let's say from here to here, we had whatever 0.6 centimeters of dilation in this hour. So we still have dilation of the cervix, but to a lesser rate. Normal rate is 1.2 centimeters dilation each hour in a multiparous, or if it's a multiparous, we have 1.5 centimeters dilation each hour. But if we have um, prolonged or protracted active phase, we will still have dilation of the cervix but to a lesser degree, I mean, each hour we will have less dilation of the cervix than normal, but we will still have dilation of the cervix because, comparing this to the previous video, if we would not have any change at all in the cervix dilation, that is not prolonged active phase, that is a rest active phase, which is what we reviewed in the previous video. So, protracted active phase, this is um, we still have dilation of the cervix, but to a lesser rate um, after the active phase. And this um, could be because of the same um, etiologies as because we have a rest active phase, which is the mnemonic of the three passenger, of the three piece, which is we can have an normality with the passenger, which is the baby, so this could be a macrosomic baby, or this could be a disproportionate fetus. We can have a normality of the pelvis, which is just um, having less space in the pelvis so that the baby does not fit and cannot accommodate um, through the labor stages. Or we can have power abnormality, which is basically talking about the contractions. We can have a hypotonic contraction, which is a contraction that has um, short duration, low frequency, and um, not high intensity. If we have a hypotonic contraction, what should we do? We need to give IV oxytocin. But if we have a hypertonic contraction, which is also not a good contraction, this is a contraction that has high um, intensity, but has short duration and has not good frequency, I mean, this is occurring less than one every two to three minutes, then we should give IV morphine because the intensity of this contraction is too much and we are dealing with the frequency and the duration, not only with the powerful of the contraction or the power of the contraction. And if none of this has um, work, we, we can also try amniotomy, which is rupture of the membranes and this can um, trigger or stimulate the cervix to continue having more dilation. But if this is not working, then we, we will end up doing a C-section. So, um, protracted active phase, this is, we still have dilution of the cervix, but to a lesser rate than normal during the active phase. So already having more than six centimeters of dilation, so already being in the active phase, we will have less than 1.2 centimeters per hour dilation of the cervix if this is a nulliparous woman or we will have less than 1.5 centimeters dilation per hour if this is a multiparous woman. And the causes could be the passenger, the baby, the pelvis, which is the mother, and the powerful, the power, which is the contraction. If IV oxytocin does not work, the last resource is to a C-section.